Well, a more bad reality for Jewel. Jewel Labs. This comes out of the, this is Connecticut's official state website, the Office of Attorney General William Tong. July 30th, 2019. A little bigger for you. Attorney General William Tong and Consumer Protection Commissioner Michelle H. Siegel have opened an investigation into Jewel Labs Incorporated regarding health claims made by the company. Jewel Electronic Nicotine Delivery Systems have never been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as a smoking sensation device. Connecticut's civil investigative demand seeks to probe to what extent Jewel has marketed itself as an effective smoking cessation device despite lack of FDA approval. This is a real big deal. I mean, it's one thing to have your product on the market and not not have any PMTAs on them. It's a whole other ballgame when you make health claims. You cannot, under any circumstances, make any health claims in regards to any of the vaping uh, products out there, be it from e-liquid or software or hardware, you cannot make these claims. Regardless if you have a modified risk claim approved by the FDA or not, you cannot, under any circumstances, make health claims in regards to your vaping products. And so they're going to investigate Juul. Interesting. Juul has never been approved as an effective smoking cessation device. Now, I know in the Committee for Oversight and Reform, Monsies, the chief product designer, stated that the company doesn't consider itself as a smoking cessation, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he says. It's what they've been doing since 2015 is what matters, especially after August 8th of 2016. If if this particular attorney general finds any, even just an iota, just a small amount, just a line, just a word that Jewel has put out in any way, even on their social media in the past, it's going to come back and haunt them, and they're going to get nailed. It could be criminal and civil. They cannot do this. They cannot make any health claims. No company can. No e-liquid company can. No hardware, no software company can make, ever can make a health claim that is, it's a safer alternative for you. It's better for you. It's better than smoking. It's it's, um, it's, uh, a harmless, a harmless reduction. It's smoking sensation, whatever. You cannot make any claim whatsoever. I mean, you and I can. I don't because I realize, who knows, this this stuff might be killing me. But you guys do make these claims all the time. We're talking about manufacturers, retailers, wholesalers, distributors, importers, exporters, and manufacturers. That's what we are talking about. These particular... Entities cannot make health claims at all, period. Says, uh, our investigation will seek to determine whether Jewel is making health claims without FDA approval in violation of the law. We will not prejudge the outcome of this investigation, but stand ready to act to protect public health should we uncover any violation of law. And if this state of Connecticut finds any violation of the law, the Food and Drug Administration is going to jump all over it. And, there, and the United, United States Department of Justice is going to come after Juul. Juul is going to have an extremely difficult time. People think Juul, just because they have billions of dollars, are going to be able to go through the PMTA process and get it su- submitted to the FDA and approved. The product itself maybe has a possibility, possibly, possibly. And even that is a a long shot. But as far as the marketing, the advertising, these health claims, whatever, even just uh, one word, just one word that they find when they go over all the documentation, 
the, uh, the Attorney General of Connecticut has access to all the documents from the Food and Drug Administration. This is a, a, a formal, a formal investigation, and they can, they will, they not only can, but they will get this all those documents that the FDA seized from Juul back in I think it was what October, two or October November two thousand eighteen. They will get all of these particular documents, plus what I'm about to read to you in a moment. Drew must submit certain information before a certain day, certain date. This is serious stuff. Um, Monsi's had no no um, no choice. He had to appear. He was compelled. He was subpoenaed to appear before the Committee on Oversight and Reform. And I tell you. Uh, it was extremely detrimental to their company. This was just a uh, jewel. Probably will not recover, no matter how much damage control that they attempt. They probably will not recover from this whole situation when Monsi's opened his mouth up, especially when he says to a committee, a congressional committee, that we are not a smoking cessation product. So, in other words, if you're not smoking cessation, that is, if you're not getting, you're not, you're not having the jewel being used to get people off combustible cigarettes or products that are really supposed to be bad for you or 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 bad for you, I should say. Um, then what are they? And there was actually a co congressperson that stated, well, "What what is jewel all about? To keep someone addicted to the 50 milligrams of nicotine salt for the rest of their life is just like an addiction company." And Monsi's are like skirted around that question. No, he is putting it out there. Even, even if it's implied or explicit, any health claims, anything that even alludes to smoking cessation, they're going to nail them on. They're going to take them up not only a civil, but it will turn into a criminal investigation. They will shut down the entire jewel company. That's the power that what's going to happen from this. Jewel needs to go into the shoe business. They need to go on the surfboard business because they're not going to last very long. I'm telling you, they are going to go out of business come May 12, 2020. They think all their billions is going to save them. No, they got not only heat from the media, but now you got heat, serious heat, legal heat from an uh, attorney general of Connecticut. And I'm sure the FDA is just watching, waiting to make their move. So anyway, so it says, uh, the civil uh, investigative demand seeks information related to the formation of the enterprise markets team, marketing materials, information decimated by the team related to Juul's effectiveness as a sensation tool for adult smokers, among other inquiries. Now, before I get into, you know, let me pause this and get to really the gist of it, okay? This is the actual formal letter of investigation to Juul. This is what Juul received. Right now, it's a civil investigation. We can very well turn into a criminal one. Anyway, this is from the Connecticut Department of Consumer Protection. State of Connecticut, before the Commissioner of Consumer Protection. Civil investigative demand to Jewel Labs Incorporated. By authority of the state of Connecticut, and more particularly pursuant to the Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act, Chapter 735A of the Connecticut General Statutes, and the authority granted the Commissioner of Consumer Protection for the state of Connecticut by virtue of Section 42-110D of the Connecticut General Statutes, Jewel Labs Incorporated, the respondents are hereby commanded to present to the commissioner under oath by delivering to the Department of Consumer Protection on or before 5 p.m. in the afternoon of September 3rd, 2019, 
answers to interrogatories and docu documentary material in connection with investigation and the respondent's delivery into the state of Connecticut or to Connecticut consumers of certain solicitations, offers, or goods which may constitute unfair or deceptive acts or practices in violation of the provisions of the um, of this of the Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act. The respondents are notified not to destroy ah not to destroy, discard, alter in any manner, or transfer from their possession any documentary material requested or identified in any of the respondents' responses to the interrogatories and document requests here and below. So they are compelled by September 3rd of 2019, which is about a little over, a tiny bit over a month from now, to answer to the state of, of Connecticut. This is what they're asking for. The advertisements, all this stuff. You could read it yourself. This is where Jewel will have a problem with the FDA when it comes to their PMTAs. They will fail miserably, miserably in this uh, particular area. No way on any earth that the Food and Drug Administration will approve of any of the PMTAs from Juul simply because of their advertising and marketing practices. It's, they're going to fail. They could sink $100 billion into their PMTAs and they will still fail. It's not about money. It's about these serious issues that Juul has. They have had and they still are having. You can read it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's uh, 16 pages long. If I need to point anything out, I will. You can pause the uh, screen and read it. Like communication means all meetings, conversations, conversations, like memos and things of that nature, conferences, discussions, correspondence, Emails, text messages, messages, telegrams, telefaxes, mailgrams, and all oral, electronic, written expressions or other occurrences whereby thoughts, opinions, or data are transmitted between two or more individuals. Holy shit. Excuse my language. I don't want to age restrict this. Holy shit. They're in serious trouble. And all of this stuff that they're requesting will need to be in those PMTAs anyway to the FDA. Absolutely. When it comes to marketing and advertising. That's all included. I showed that when they did the IQOS. All the correspondence went into those PMTAs. This is no joke, guys. You think you guys are living in La La Land for the most part. And then they break down the terms. This is what happened back in, I think it was um, June, I think, of 2018 when former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb requested all this information from Juul. But under Gottlieb, as we know, he's a lax, he was a very lax commissioner. So this is what the FDA, former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb should have done is actually have an investigation into Juul. Now, you could say it's sort of an investigation when they demanded information from Juul, but they never followed up on that investigation. This state will. 
State's a whole different bowl game. So the custodian mean, shall mean the persons who is or are most knowledgeable about the information documents requested here, in, including <clears throat> the location and method of record keeping for the documents responsive to this request, and the organization of the documents as they are produced to the commissioner pursuant to this request. Respondent's process for identifying documents responsive to this request, the person persons shall have the ability ability to authenticate and identify each document. <laughs> this is no joke. This is very well turned into a criminal investigation. They all already have a RICO statute lawsuit against Jewel. And now they got this. Even the documents they're requesting whether in final or draft form, even a few scribbles on a page they want to see. However, produce or reproduced of any of every kind description in your actual constructive possession. Once again, all writings, communications, text messages, and emails, account documents, calendars, or planners, charts, reports, diaries, drafts, drawings, Faxes, graphs, travel records, memoranda, minutes. Ooh, those minutes are going to nail them on these, uh, these uh, minute, you know, the minutes to these meetings. Notes, notes even they want. Papers, photographs, receipts, reports, statements, statistical records, studies, presentations, timesheets or logs, vouchers, way tickets, working papers, or any other tangible thing. In other words, turn all your, every single thing over to the, uh, Attorney General of Connecticut. And they want everything that's done on electronic means. So file servers, email servers, workstations, desktops, hard drives, personal digi digital assistance, uh, smartphones, tablets, or and other mobile electronic devices or other electronic social industrial business web-based media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, within your control. Got to hand all of that over. They ain't leaving nothing out. They are going after. I mean, this is worse than what former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb requested back in, I think it was June of 2018. Records, data, reports, queries, drive from or residing in applications and databases, data compilations from which Information can be derived, converted, or translated into reasonably usable form. Magnetic disks, magnetic strips, magnetic tape, recognition characters, microfiche, microfilm, uh, optical characters, punched cords, punched paper tapes, audio tapes, or recordings, or videotapes, or recordings. They are asking for it all. Everything. Even their cloud. Even their cloud. Info, you know, the information is stored in a cloud. Everything. Facilities, backup sites. <laughs> well, ENDS means any electronic nicotine delivery system, which includes but is not limited to the Juul device, Juul Pause, and any other Juul product. Entity means without limitation, any corporation, company, limited liability, company or corporation, partnership, limited partnership, association or other firm or similar body or any unit, division, agency, department or similar subdivision thereof, meaning everything. Even those, you know, the hardware is manufactured in China. The pods are ma manufactured in the USA. All of the documentation in China needs to be handed over as well. Everything it goes on. You can read that. We're only on the fifth page of 16 pages yet. They're going to close Jewel down. They're going to close it down as a company. I've always said and always will. The Food and Drug Administration should have, not only should have, but ought to have had 
issued an FDA warning letter to Juul. They should have done that several months ago under Gottlieb and now even under Sharpless. They're just prancing and dancing around. Jewel, you, your, or your business shall mean Jewel Labs Incorporated, a Delaware corporation with its principal place of business located in San Francisco, California, as well as, well as any entity under the direct or indirect control of Jewel Labs, meaning all that manufacturing going on in China also will be submitted to the Connecticut Attorney General. All of that. Anything with websites, Jewel affiliate means any personal and or website with an established HTML, a link to Jewel's website and shall include but not be limited to any person that Jewel has approved to be part of its Jewel Vapor affiliate campaign as described and promoted on Jewel's website. So all these websites will be gobbled up. Jewel Internet retailer shall mean any person that sells Jewel products or Jewel compatible or superficially similar identical products through an internet website, regardless of whether Jewel has or has not authorized them to sell such product online. Meaning even the counterfeit Jewels that are out there, all of that information must be submitted to the Connecticut Attorney General. Then, of course, all the advertising, this whole thing, this is what really nailed them. In 2015, Jewel launch or launch. Now, you have to understand this, is, this applies with this state. The Food and Drug Administration did not regulate the vaping industry until August 8th of 2016, the effective date. But as far as states are concerned, so, so in other words, the FDA can't go really back to 2015 and nail Juul on anything that they did back in 2015. But under these consumer protection um, laws that are coming out of these states, and especially in regards to Connecticut, they can go back to 2015 to the very beginning, even back to Pax Labs. Absolutely and nail them on something that happened in 2015. See, that's the difference between the federal statute in regards to the FDA as opposed to the state statutes. These states can go back to 2015 and nail them seriously on this whole concept of this jewel launch. And I, and I did a, just did a video showing you all the pictures that had to do with that jewel launch back in 2015 to 2017. And it shows you it was definitely groomed and it was shaped in a way to appeal to those under the age of 18 as well as those over the age of 18. It targeted mainly early, early 20s, uh, people in their ages of early 20s, but it also targeted those under the age of 18 were very colorful ads and young young models and influencers on uh, uh, you know web social media websites and things of that nature and this state of Connecticut will nail them on that can go back to 2015 and nail them on that see that's the difference between that that and the FDA the FDA can only only nail jewel on their advertising and marketing a post August 8th of 2016. They were still doing it up until August of 2017, like when they went into schools and, and that one representative um, stated it was uh, totally safe and all this. This is going to come back and haunt them when it, when it comes to PMTAs and the FDA. But this state of Connecticut can go back to 2015 even before that with any of this stuff and nail them on it legally. 2015 Jewel launch, a launch shall mean the advertising mar and marketing campaign developed and deployed by Jewel or any third parties retained by Jewel to launch, introduce, 
and release its products in the United States in June and July of 2015 to the end of the calendar year 2015, including but not limited to the Vaporize campaign described in the New York Times, August 27, 2018, article entitled, De Jewel Allure Teenagers and Get Customers for Life. Yes, all of this stuff I, I did in that video, I'll show you all the pictures of all this crap. De Jewel Party. All of this stuff, they're going to nail them on. They should be very, you know, if it's when it's a civil investigation, all that the state of Connecticut can do is two things. They could prevent Jewel from selling any of their products in, inside of the state of Connecticut, and they will find them. They will find them big time. I mean, hundreds, if not billions of dollars. Right? But this can also very well lead to a, a criminal investigation, which will not only close down the entire Jewel company, but can very well send Monsies and the rest of these characters, Kevin Burns, the rest of them, off to prison. This is a very serious, serious situation. When, when I pulled this up, I said, holy crap, the, this company is in serious doo-doo problems. And they want um, documents may include private placement memoranda, marketing documents targeted to, targeted to investors, statements of information, financial projections. I mean, they want it all. Natural person, association, business, company, corporation, firm, organization, partnership, trust, joint venture, licensee, affiliate, subsidiary, proprietorship, agency, whatever. They are going to nail them on everything. Promotional pricing offers. They they did that, but the in which you offer your starter kit at a discounted price. Let me quote the links. Now I have absolutely no empathy and no sympathy for Jewel. Absolutely not. Anyone that does, Ruby Rue always goes on about. Oh, I love Jewel. You know, as far as I'm concerned, she could take a sailboat and hopefully it drops off at the end of the earth. You know, anyone that's supportive of Jewel is out of their freaking minds. They have no clue as to what's going on, the reality that is going on with Jewel. Absolutely no clue. Other than maybe they have a stand because they want to promote their products or make money off their products or they like their e-liquids and their, uh, the nicotine salts and the pods or whatever have you. Juul is a corrupt company. It is a bad, bad, bad company. Bad company. And I hope, I hope, I wish, and I pray to all the gods out there that this Connecticut Attorney General takes Jewel and puts it completely under, takes them out of business. Absolutely. This business needs to go out of business. Absolutely. On social media, Facebook, Flickr, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Quora, Reddit, even Reddit, Snapchat, Tumblr, Twitter, Vine, YouTube, etc. Even YouTube as well as any email, text messaging, and video tele, tele, whatever systems. They're going after it all. He, he didn't, they didn't miss one heartbeat in this one. This is, like I said, this is worse than what the FDA, when they requested information from, from, the, uh, from Juul back in 2018, this is worse than that. Worse than that. They ain't leaving anything go. So this is the instructions to Jewel. This response to the CID shall be submitted in the following manner. Not can be or may be, but shall be. That's a direct order when they use that term, shall be. Except where otherwise explicitly indicated, this CID covers the period from January 1st, 2015 through the present. See? 
They're going to nail them all this time. They're in serious doo-doo problems. And, it, and the documents framed in the present tense shall be construed to cover the entire relevant part or period or any part of it. So they have all this material that they're asking these, document, this doc, these documents, and be it verbal or written or whatever have you, especially in their advertising and marketing. From January 1st of 2015 up to the present time, when present time will be up until the time that they actually are in receipt of this particular uh, uh, investiga investigative uh, request, I guess you could call it, I don't know, the CID. Um, that's the time but uh, that they have to submit all that information to them. Anyway, the point is, it goes back to January 1st of 2015. Throughout the entire year of 2015 was all crap coming out of Jewel. And all that information, when the Connecticut Attorney General looks it all over, I'm telling you, they're going to indict some people here. I'm telling you, it's about to come out. Jewel's going to be indicted on crimes. I'm telling you, it's not just a civil situation. It starts off that way, but it's going to turn eventually into a criminal indictment. And then it goes on. You can read it. Well, they use this word privileged. And they have to prove to the Connecticut Attorney General that it is privilege. Privilege could be something like um, how a jewel nicotine salt is made. Do not necessarily have to give that kind of proprietary information away. Um, how they process it in their manufacturing plant. Certain things like that falls under privileged. Other things privileged would be if there is an actual civil investigation or a criminal investigation, they don't necessarily have to give that information away. Like, for instance, all these civil lawsuits that are against Juul, those particular lawsuits, the information that is traded back and forth between Juul and the um, plaintiff's attorneys some of that information may be privileged, so they don't have to give that information away. Um, information that might be more on a personal side, like for instance, maybe Monsies is having a email with his wife. I'm going to presume that he's married. It might not be. I don't know. But let's say he has a wife. That is considered privileged information. Um, now, if it has anything to do with the company and with the marketing and advertising bath in 2015, some of those errors of that, let's say, email can be redacted, but, mo but the rest has to be given over to the Attorney General of Connecticut. So these are considered privileges, but they're, they're more particularized. And, they, and it doesn't go to the advertising and marketing that what this Attorney General of Connecticut is really after. The bulk, I would say probably 99% of it, is going to be handed over to this Attorney General. It says you may submit photocopies and little original documents, provided that such copies are true, correct, and complete copies of the original documents. So they can give copies you know, they don't have to give their original documentation to the Attorney General, but they have to be true. Can't be made up. It says, all boxes, folders, or media containing submitted documents shall be marked with your name and the names of the persons whose files are contained in that box or folder. 
Before producing any documents, you must contact Assistant Attorneys General. To arrange a meeting or conference call with the company's personnel who are familiar with this, with the particular ESI and the applications and blah, 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 to explain to the Connecticut office the manner in which it's stored and the types of information that are available in the application. Now, how this is going to be done, it's not going to be done by Monsies or Kevin Burns. It'll be done by Jules' attorneys, okay? Their attorneys will be in contact with the Connecticut Office of the Attorney General. Each one will have an ID number on them. It'll be on CD or DVD or paper form or plain text format or PTF or PCF and all this other stuff. So it says, if you are unable to answer or respond fully to any interrogatory or document request after exercising due diligence to secure information necessary to answer or respond to the fullest extent possible, a, answer, respond to the extent possible. B, specify the reason for your inability to answer or respond in full. And C, set forth the efforts you made to obtain the requested information. Now, you know, they might go, you know, try to get around this jewel in some areas that they don't want to, you know, send certain documentation off to the attorney general. And they will battle this back and forth. They'll go back and forth on this to make sure that Jewel is not lying, which they probably will, because I consider Jewel a corrupt com company. It says, uh, your document retention policy should be suspended to prevent the destruction of any documents. So as far as like when they shred their documents, that has to stop the moment that they receive this will be considered, actually, that would definitely be criminal in and of itself. That's what you call obstruction of justice. If you cannot supply precise information, state your best estimate or approximation and designate the response as an estimate or approximation. And this is where it's, they also have to specify exactly why it's privileged in whole or in part, like in part would be like, Monsi sends an email to his wife, talks about the kids, you know, if they have kids. Uh, I'm, let's say hypothetically, I'm resume that they have kids. That can be, considered privileged and all they have to say is well it's a um, that part of the email I'm talking about personal business but then the other parts of that that same email will have to be given to the attorney general Goes on a little bit more See, so, and they have to describe the redacted portion and basis for the redaction. As far as definitions are concerned, you could read that. See, so they go back here, look at this. Identify any changes in your corporate structure between 2007 and the present. They know it was back in, back in that time with Pax Labs. They have to give all that information in regards to officers, directors, managers, members, partners, and board members. They have to do the name and job title of the individuals that are responsible for compliance with applicable laws. Hmm. Hate to be in their seats. And then promotional pricing, your marketing strategy, consumer demographics, and age groups targeted. 
the reasons that Juul targeted those consumers. Hmm. All that stuff. While well, I look at that, they have to say how many Connecticut consumers purchased Juul products through that your through the promotional pricing offer, offers. That is very, very interesting stuff here. I'm sure the FDA is keeping an eye on this, definitely. And a prize markets team. They won it all. I'll just pause the page if I'm going too fast. So let's produce all the documents, data, and other information that you have communicated or provided to health insurers, healthcare providers, employers, public sector employers concerning whether Juul is effective at helping adult smokers stop smoking cigarettes. So see, that is a health claim. You cannot do that under federal statute, let alone state statute. All that stuff. This is serious stuff. Even the contacts that, that they have had, Joel has had, they have to include all of that in regards to these health claims. And then it's say, of fail not under penalty of perjury, uh, penalty of law. Signed this 29th day of July 2019, Consu Commissioner of Consumer Protection Michelle H. Siegel. My hat's off to this lady. And then do the oath, and they serve Jewel. This is to serve them. I don't know exactly when they received it, but I'm sure they received it probably by now. They could do this electronically or hand delivered. A registered mail, probably, or even someone from Connecticut, an attorney out of this attorney general's office, can literally take a plane over to Jewel Labs and serve them in person. But it's going to be served pretty soon because their deadline is September 3rd, 2019. So I'm sure they're going to give them at least 30 days. So it's got to be. Jewel, in other words, Jewel Labs has to be in receipt of it by um, uh, August 3rd. I'm sure they're in, in receipt of it now. But anyway, so that's that. I'm sorry that, you know, that, 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 that this video went a bit too long. But this is very, very interesting. This is very, very, very serious for Jewel. FDA is going to keep an eye on this particular situation. And this can very well turn into a criminal indictment by Connecticut or any state for that matter. In fact, other states can very well follow suit and do exactly what the Connecticut Attorney General is doing. Jewel is under extreme amount of pressure. When the, when Monsies appeared between before the uh, Committee on Oversight and Reform, like I said in another video, that was bad for Jewel. I mean, Juul was in damage control anyway. We're putting out videos showing them the manufacturing plant of the pods and all this. And, and, and you know, Kevin Burns, CEO, is saying, I'm sorry to the parents and all this other crap. No, the, it's, not even, it's not even a point of damage control anymore. They're fighting for the survival of their company. Your company can very well go out of business. And, you know, personally speaking, I don't know about any of you guys out there, but I hope, I hope that Jewel goes out of business. Absolutely. That would, we are not Jewel. I, I don't know about you guys, but when I consider myself a vapor, I do not consider myself a Jewel vapor. I do not consider myself 50 milligrams of nicotine salt vapor. I don't. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't consider myself that way. 
I like my sub ohm tanks once in a while, and I like my RDAs, and I like three milligrams of, uh, of uh, free base nicotine. That's what I like. I just like the regular nicotine or a regular e liquid with three milligrams of nicotine. And that's normally, normally the adult vapor, at least intermediate or advanced vapor, is usually falls into that category. Unfortunately, this whole jewel situation, I've always said it and I always will, painted a very bad picture for vaping. And of course, they made billions of dollars out of it, but they're going to have to spend hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, to defend themselves with all this crap that's going on. You think the little lawsuits that came out after the FDA in regards to the vaping industry is a huge thing? All these states and individuals and class action suits and all this stuff is adding up into the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in regards to Juul. They're fighting for the survival of their company. And all I can wish upon a little star is that it literally goes out of business. Goes out of business before they even submit their PMTAs to the FDA. Because the FDA is going to put them out of business with all this marketing and advertising. This is part of the PMTA process. They're going to go out of business, and rightfully so. And the only winners out of it is Ultria. Ultria will take whatever profits they made out of that $12.8 billion investment and walk away with as much as money they can. And that's that. End the story. And Ultra will still be in business, and Jewel will be out of business. Rightfully so. They deserve it all the way up, down, and all around. It's a shame what happened to vapors in general because of Jewel. I mean, we have enough problems as it is with e liquids and toxicants and e liquids and all this other stuff. And trying to get a hardware through, be it a sub ohm tank or a device slimmed down or whatever to the FDA, get it approved by the FDA through the PMTA process. It's bad enough we have to go through that. Then have Juul as a huge, huge black cloud over us. In fact, the vapor, the vapors in general should rise up against Juul and put them out of business by not buying any of their products. If you are wise, if you're in your right state of mind, unfortunately, most vapors are not. Talking about my hardcore subscribers, I think they get this whole picture overall. But Jewel is a bad company. It's a corrupt. I rather, I rather call Jewel. I rather call, ah, call Jewel a corrupt company, and that is what they are. Especially, I've always had inklings that it was a corrupt company. But after Monsies appeared before the Committee of Oversight and Reform, I realized that Juul is a corrupt company that needs to go out of business, period. And on that point, guys, have a good one. Bye-bye.